and the church will still be standing when this virus is over. The church has gone through many, many uh, uh, changes, and we thank God for this medium whereby we can reach you and be a blessing to you. All right, God bless you, and we hope those announcements have uh, will cause you to be just a little more at ease. Uh, at this time, we are going to prepare for the word, um, and we have a little special something uh, that we want to share with you um, at this time, and I'm going to ask, to ask Brother Scott to start us off. Place is empty, no more traffic in the street. All the builders' tools are silent, no more time to harvest wheat. Busy housewives cease their labor in the courtroom, no debate. Work on Earth has been suspended as the king comes through the gate. Happy faces line the hallway. Those whose lives have been redeemed, broken homes that he has mended, risen is free. Children and the aged, hand in hand, stand all alone. Who were crippled, broken, ruined, stand in garments white as snow. I can hear the chariots rumble. I can see the marching throng. And the flurry of God's trumpets spell the end of sin and wrong. Regal robes are not unfolded. Heaven's grand stand all in place. Heaven's choir is now assembled. Now to sing amazing grace. King is coming. The King is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see. Oh, the King is coming. The King is coming. Praise God. He's coming for me. Oh, the King is coming. The King is coming. Oh, I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now this face I see. Oh, the King. Coming, the King is coming. Praise God, He's coming for me. Father God, in your name we come now in this moment, and we are blessed, O oh Lord to be in the land of the living one more time. And God, like the children of Israel, we are in our houses praying that that pandemic would pass us by. And we know that if we trust you, if we take care to do the responsible thing, that you will see us through this. And so, God, we come this morning for a word on this Palm Sunday when we celebrate the triumphant entry of your son into the city. 
We pray that the word that you have blessed us with will be a blessing and an encouragement to your people. This is our prayer now in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let me first begin by thanking our team for working with us and you see that we are in the sanctuary this morning of Faith AME Church. Um, we have a nice little visual background and I had to put on this gold shirt because the white shirt made me look like I didn't have a body, I just had a head. And uh, it was kind of weird, so I had to put on something that had a little color to it. Uh, today's message, and I'm getting comfortable with this media, comes to us from the text that was read um, for our scripture. Uh, so I'm sure that most of you are familiar with it. Matthew, the 21st chapter, and reading the 9th through the 11th verses for our assignment this morning. And it reads thus. And the crowds that went before him and the crowds that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, who is this? And the crowd said, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Well, let me begin my assignment today by defining what a crowd is. Webster's Dictionary defines a crowd as a large number of persons, especially when collected together. A large number of persons especially when collected together. Using this definition, we approach the text before us as we endeavor to see who made up this crowd that had assembled outside the holy city of Jerusalem on this Passover holiday. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, Pastor, you ain't give us a topic. It's coming, it's coming. It is obviously, not one made up of the rich and the powerful or the religious elite known as the Sanhedrin. And it was not made up by those who ruled the city of Jerusalem in the name of the Roman emperor. What we do see and who we do see is that those who have laid down their garments or broke off palm branches, whose garments were not of the richest cloth or of fine design, and did not live in mansions or ride in chariots or even own horses, because horses at that time were reserved for the rich and high officials. This we know, this we see, and this we will call today the Jesus crowd. The Jesus crowd, that's our topic for today. This is the Jesus crowd. And it is represented by those who were marginalized, those who lived in what we would call the hood, those who, if you were lived in Baltimore, might have lived on Pennsylvania Avenue and North Avenue. Uh, if you came from Washington, they would have lived in Southeast DC or, or from the Berry Farms area. Uh, they came from the soup kitchens and the homeless shelters. Uh, there were orphans and widows and widowers, uh, the farmers and the maid servants and the man servants, those who sold goods in the marketplaces and lived from paycheck to paycheck. These are those who comprise the Jesus crowd. And you will also find in that crowd the bride and groom from the wedding feast at Cana where Jesus turned water into wine. The 5,000 men who Jesus set on the mountainside and fed with five loaves and, and two fish. Some of the disciples of John the Baptist and that young boy who gave of the five loaves and two fish that the 5,000 might be fed. The woman with the issue of blood you would find in the crowd and that woman caught in adultery where Jesus wrote down in the dirt that said, let he who is out sin cast the first stone. Yes, and the woman at the well of Samaria where Jesus told her, if I give you of the water that I have, you will never thirst again. 
Here we see in the crowd the centurion and his daughter who came to Jesus to ask Jesus to heal his daughter, even though she wasn't in his presence. And Jesus said, your faith has made your daughter whole. We see the woman who Jesus brought back from the dead and the blind man whose eyes he opened by spitting on the ground and making some mud pies and putting it on his eyes and giving him his sight. Here we see in the crowd the 10 lepers that Jesus healed and Zacchaeus, look at Zacchaeus. Look at him in the tree. See him who was in the tree. Jesus said, today, I'm coming to your house. And Nicodemus, who snuck to Jesus by night and asked Jesus, what must he do to be born again? And Jesus said, well, you know, you've got to be born again. And he said, well, can I go back into my mother's womb? And Jesus said, no, you're talking about a physical rebirth. I'm talking about a spiritual birth, that you must be born by the Spirit of God. Two, we see here Mary and Martha and Lazarus, whom Jesus had only recently brought back from the tomb. And the families that Jesus blessed when he said to suffer the little children to come unto me and to forbid them not for of such is the kingdom. These are those who made up the Jesus crowd, the man whose demons were cast out in the graveyard and the demons uh, said, let us go into the swine herd. That man who Jesus told, take up your bed and walk when his friends put him down through the roof so that he might be healed by Jesus. They were in the Jesus crowd. They were there because they had been with him. They had been healed by him. They had been delivered by him. Many of them had never seen such miracles uh, in their lifetime. And they witnessed this man who said he was the son of God. And they came on this first Palm Sunday to honor him. The crowd, they were crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. And this is a curious thing that they had this unique chant. Who told them to say Hosanna? How could they have known uh, that he was the son of God? Simply, my friends, because of the miracles and the message that he taught, they knew that he was no ordinary man. And so on this day, as Jesus on the fold of a coat of an ass uh, rides into Jerusalem, the crowd, the Jesus crowd, the Jesus crowd is crying out uh, their unique chant, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And Hosanna, we understand, is an expression of praise and adoration and joy. They were happy. They were joyous. They were uh, uh, announcing the new king who they thought was coming to set up an earthly kingdom. They thought that there would be no more poverty. There would be no more sadness. There wouldn't be no more inequity because here was this Jesus, the one whom they had seen perform all these miracles. He was coming to Jerusalem and they were looking for a revolution because here was the son of God coming in his father's name. But no, that was not the case. This Jesus who they honored by taking their clothes and putting them down on the road that he might walk, the donkey might walk on them. This Jesus who they laid palm branches and waved palm branches for, this Jesus was not to be a civil king. He was not to rule the city of Jerusalem in the context they were really thinking of. But he was on his way somewhere else, more important. He had to go through the city of Jerusalem, but he was not on his way to Jerusalem. He was on his way through Jerusalem because in going through Jerusalem, he had to meet the dreaded cross on the other side. But on this day, on this wonderful Palm Sunday, the Jesus crowd, the Jesus crowd was holding sway for, they came to honor him. They came to bless him with their hosannas and they came to, to lift him up. They had the greatest need of him, who as a member of the crowd, they understood that this was someone special. And so I ask you today, each of you, ask yourself, would you have been a member of this crowd? Would you have taken your garments and spread them before him? Would you have broken off a branch of a tree, a palm tree to put in his path? And how are you showing your admiration for he who came in the name of the Lord? Are you in that crowd? Are you a member of that crowd? Would you be a member of that crowd today? Oh, my brothers and my sisters, there is a crowd called the Jesus crowd in 2020. 
We are known as the Christian church. And today we, like those of old, we celebrate and we say, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But we look for a different kind of coming. Hallelujah. We look for a different season, oh God, to celebrate the coming of the Savior. We don't see him riding on a donkey, but we see him riding on a cloud, on a horse of white, coming with the myriad of angels to set the world in order. For when he comes again, he will not come on the donkey of the foal of an ass, but he will come riding in all of his glory and majesty and honor and he will come to redeem those of us who have called him our savior who accepted the gift of salvation on this palm sunday will you be like the jesus crowd will you become a member of the jesus crowd will you cry hosanna hosanna in the context of the 20th century church realizing that why we only symbolize what those did in the first century church. But now we come, oh God, knowing the full story, knowing that he got up on the third Sunday morning and that he is coming again to receive us unto himself. And we will cry, we won't cry, Hosanna there, we'll be crying, holy, 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 Lord God almighty, come, Jesus come. Oh, we will have a wonderful time on that day when Christ comes the second time as our savior, as our judge, as our risen Lord. On this Palm Sunday, I challenge you to become of the new Jesus crowd. We don't lay down palm branches or clothes strewn in the way, but we give our hearts to him. We let him uh, uh, take control of our lives and, and, and we accept the gift of salvation that, that this whole, uh, uh, Palm Sun uh, uh, brings into fruition. It is as he is going to Jerusalem on his way to Calvary, we can become a part of the new Jesus crowd in commemoration of what he has already done. And so I challenge you in your life, if you do not know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, to give yourself to him, to become a part of the Jesus crowd. There are a whole lot of crowds out here. Uh, on Friday, we, uh, there's going to be a different crowd. But this crowd today, we this is the crowd we need to be a part of. We don't need to be a part of that Friday crowd. But this crowd, oh, you need to get on board. This is the crowd. Oh, they don't look like much. No, we don't look like much. Look like we don't have anything at all. But I heard Jesus when he said, take no thought of what you should eat or drink. Because these things were what? Everything's going to be going away. But if you get into Jesus' crowd, this new crowd, I promise you, while you may have some trials and tribulations, and as Paul declared, the suffering of this present time is not yet to be compared with the glory that is yet before us, you will find that your life, your life will be richer. Your life will be better because you have joined the Jesus crowd called the church. And the church does not have a denominational name. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the universal church. Oh, we have denominations, yes. But the church that you want to join is the church of Jesus Christ by giving your life to him. And then he may send you to a place whereby you can work out your soul salvation. But you got to join Jesus first. And no matter what the church name is, if you join Jesus and if you live by his command, you will be a part of the Jesus crowd. So look around you, what crowd do you belong to? And if you are listening to this broadcast and you, you have not made Jesus a, a part of, of your life, if you're not a part of the Jesus crowd, uh, uh, I entreat you to come on in and, 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 and come become a part of this crowd. And I promise you, your life will be richer and sweeter and you'll feel more at ease and you'll know that this pandemic will pass and you'll be able to say like the word no weapon formed against me shall prosper and then too if we don't know what god's purpose is uh, you can also say like esther said well if i perish i perish because what if i live i gain if i die i gain because i have what christ in my life so god use me as you will but i'm going to become a part of the jesus crowd and so we extend to you this invitation that you would give your life to christ today become a part of that crowd become a part of those who know the power of the holy spirit 
who know the presence of the Holy Spirit. You don't need to be in a crowd to have the Holy Spirit. Oh, I know many times uh, I've seen Christians and I know Christians who've gotten in their car and put on their radio and listened to a gospel song that really ministered to them. And the Holy Spirit has been right there in their midst. Oh, yeah, you can be a crowd of one sometimes. That's just fine. But sometimes you, just you and the Holy Ghost, can that can be a crowd. Or you, the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in his name. So I implore you today, if you have not become a part, become a part of the Jesus crowd called the church. And the church has a house. And we are not in that house right now. But we will get there. We will get there one day. This will soon be over. Trouble don't last always. But we know that if we continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand, if we continue to trust in him, we know that God will what? Bring us through and we will be blessed because he says, if you're faithful unto death, I will give you the crown of life. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters. And on this Palm Sunday, make sure you're in the right crowd. Make sure that your hosannas are loud, your hallelujahs are loud. Make sure that you recognize who he is and in whose name he comes and who you belong to once you join the Jesus crowd. Because the Jesus crowd walks by faith and not by sight. God bless you today. And may this word inspire you, may it encourage you, as you go through your week and even confined to your homes, know that you can be a part of the Jesus crowd. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Eternal God, our heavenly Father, well, this is a time when we need to have your fatherly guidance and protection. We come to you as the church this morning seeking, oh God, comfort, seeking, oh God, a sense of calm, seeking, oh God, a peace that will make our spirits realize that as your children, you will take care of us. And God, we bring before you those this morning who are sick, remembering Sister Bonnie, Sister Ruth. Remember Brother Snowden. We remember, oh God, Brother Harrison. We remember, oh God, all of the sick and shut in of our congregation, Sister Phyllis, and all of those who are ill. Remember our sister in Bermuda, Sister Laurie and Sister Annette. My niece Jabria be with her, oh God, and others who are ill. We know that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly all we could think of imagine. We pray for the family of the Reverend Good Staff from Pilgrim who passed this week. Be with him and his family. We know, oh God, that we are ultimately in your hands. We pray, oh God, for this country and the people around the world who are suffering through this pandemic, especially the first responders, those whose lives have already passed on, those who fear for their lives even as they are taking care of others who may be sick. Remember the political leadership of the world today because the decisions that they make actually will cost lives. People will die if they make the wrong decision and are already dying and have died because of the political leadership, their ineptitude to be able to make right decisions. Oh God, have mercy. We remember the leadership of our Zion, of, our, of the church, oh God that as they lead us through this pandemic, remember our Bishop, Bishop Davis and Supervisor Davis, our presiding elders and the pastors, 
across our Zion as they make decisions, oh God, that affect the welfare and the health and even the life of those that we are charged to serve. Lord, let us not do anything. Let us not say anything that because of us, a life is lost. Give us wisdom. Give us, oh God, knowledge. And let us lean not to our own understanding, but to ask you and to seek you and to follow your word as you reveal it to us. We know, oh God, that there are so many who are suffering. Remember those, Heavenly Father, who are homeless. Remember those who are living in situations, oh God, where there's domestic violence or even sexual harassment in the home. God, be with them. Lord, remember those who are outside of the ark of safety because you reign on the just and the unjust. We know, oh God, that all things are in your hand and all we have to do is trust you. Lord, as they used to say back in the day, this is a needing time. This is a needing time. We pray, oh God, for your people everywhere. Bless them, oh God. Keep them, oh God. Let them know that they are not alone. And God, when it's all said and done, we know that we have a home. Paul declares a building not made by hands. And even as we look forward to that great day, Lord, while we sojourn here on this earth, let us not be a stumbling block. But let us, oh God, be a helping hand. Let us be mindful of those who are less fortunate than we are and do what we can to be our brother and our sister's keeper. Bless Faith African Methodist Episcopal Church. God, every member, every household. We thank you, God, for Sister Cindy and Sister Denise. We know, and Brother Calloway, uh, they are especially uh, vulnerable in this time. And our seniors, oh God, bless them. Oh God, they're going out and they're coming in. We, we, we know we have members who are vulnerable. We just ask you, oh God, to intervene and be with them, oh God, in their household. We thank you for faith, oh God, and we thank you for the faithfulness of faith for every member, for every young adult, for every child. God, we pray that you would just keep us in your care. Remember the associate pastors, and especially we thank you for this team of technicians who enabled us to use this media to reach our members. Lord, continue to use us. Bless us and keep us. And we'll give your name all the glory all the honor and all the praise. This is our prayer in your son's name and for his sake we pray. And together we say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you his peace. Know that you are not alone. Even though it may just be you in the house, the Holy Spirit is there with you. And if you do not know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, we entreat you to know him right where you are. Just open up your heart and say, Lord, I want you to save me. And I believe that you died for my sins. And I confess that I'm a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross, but that you rose the third day and that you're coming back again. Save my soul. And God will hear your prayer and save you. God bless you. Until we meet again through this medium on Wednesday, on Thursday for Monday Thursday service. Be at peace again. If you need us, you know how to contact us. Reach out to your brothers and sisters and know that God has not abandoned us. Neither has he given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God bless you and keep you as our prayer. On behalf of Mrs. Christopher, my wife, Mrs. Christopher, myself, and our entire family, we wish that you have a blessed, blessed, blessed Palm Sunday. Uh, cook a special meal. Uh, my family has a challenge on today. Uh, we got a cook-off, and I'm going to beat them again. They, they came at me, so I got to go get them. I'm going to do something, and I might share it with you, Faith. Uh, what well, I got to make a dessert, and hopefully it comes out well. God bless you, and we're looking forward. I, I, I see that the um, we were talking about having a games night, and we're trying to put together a, a, a talent show um, on 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 this medium. So look forward to some more innovative ways. And I want to thank uh, Sister Christine for helping us do the backdrop uh, that put us in the church. And uh, 
looks good and we'll be doing some different things as we move forward through this medium. God bless you and keep you. Have a wonderful Palm Sunday. Here's our prayer for you and your family. God bless you and goodbye. Yolanda. Oh, Yolanda put a picture up. Hi. Hi. I was trying to get to uh, the speaker. 